Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series created by the Homix Middle School Earth Science Department. Today, we're going to focus on convergence plate boundaries. In order to understand convergence, we've got to talk a little bit about the crust. Now our crust, or our lithosphere, is broken up into different sections called plates. Now our plates can either be made up of oceanic crust or continental crust. Please know the difference between the two of them because when those two types of crust interact with each other, they're either going to slide side by side, they're going to pull apart from each other, or in this case, they're going to crash together. So when we talk about convergent plate boundaries, okay, we're dealing with three different types, ocean to continent, ocean to ocean, or continent to continent. So let's take a look at some of the geologic features. Okay, we're going to start off with ocean to continent. Your crust is destroyed here. The surface, some of the plates, are going to be destroyed at convergent plate boundaries, specifically ocean to continent. They're going to be destroyed through a process called subduction, which we'll touch base on in a second. You also get mountain ranges at these types of plate boundaries. Some of those mountains are volcanic. You tend to get very strong earthquakes. And you tend to get offshore trenches. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So our ocean to continent convergence. Our convection cells are going to take our ocean across on the left, and they're going to cause the contents across on the right to collide with each other. Because of the density differences, your ocean across is going to move underneath your continental crust. It's going to plunge into the earth. That's what we call subduction. During the subduction process, there's a tremendous amount of friction, so you're going to get some very strong earthquakes. As that plate gets deeper and deeper into the planet, it gets hotter. Eventually, it gets hot enough where the plate starts to melt. So the leading edge of that plate melts. The magma is going to be forced to the surface. You tend to get a mountain range that runs parallel with the coastline. Some of those mountain peaks tend to be volcanic. Where those two plates interact with each other, that's what we call a trench. Trenches tend to be some of the deepest points on the planet. Let's take a look at where some of these uh, features can be found. First off, in North America, you have a very small plate called the Juan de Fuca plate. That's subducting underneath North America. You're going to get your subduction, big earthquakes, mountains, trenches, and some of those mountains tend to be quite active in terms of volcanism. So you're going to get what's called the Cascade Mountain Range down the west coast of the U.S. You get the same features at the Cocos Plate, where it's subducting underneath North America and the Caribbean Plate, and you get the exact same features here with the Nazca Plate. What's important about the Nazca Plate subducting underneath South America is that you have the Peru Chile Trench there. That's the location of the biggest earthquake ever recorded back in 1960, 9.5 on the Richter scale. You also have a very big mountain range down the west coast of South America called the Andes Mountains. Well, this map is on page 5 in your reference table, so please make sure you know how to read it. If you have a little bit of trouble, come down to the key at the bottom. That symbol there tells you exactly what a convergent plate boundary is going to look like. Now, in North America here, we have the Cascade Mountains. It's one of the more prominent mountain ranges we have. It's a very volcanic mountain range. And like I mentioned before, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, just some of the many uh, volcanic peaks that are active in this volcanic mountain range. The second type of convergent plate boundary is ocean to ocean. And again, you get the exact same features. Crust is destroyed here through the process of subduction. You're going to get mountain ranges. Some of those mountain ranges can be volcanic. You're going to get some very strong earthquakes. Okay, and you're going to get some trenches. Well, what's the difference between ocean to continent and ocean to ocean if you get the same features? Let me show you. Because you have the same type of crust colliding with each other, one of the crustal plates has to move underneath the other. And the one that's going to move underneath the other is going to be the one that's going to be a little bit more dense. You notice that they're both crustal plates are both oceanic, but the plate on the right has a little bit of continent attached to it. So what's going to happen here is that the more dense oceanic crust is going to subduct underneath the oceanic crust that has some continent attached to it. Now what makes this difference is the only difference you have is the fact that your mountain range, your volcanoes specifically, are in the water and not along the coastline. You get subduction, you get the big earthquakes, you get the trench system, you get the mountains and volcanoes. Instead of being on land, now they're in the water. Let me show you where some of these locations can be. 
the Aleutian Islands are an ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergence, highly volcanic. Your Japanese islands, ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergence, highly volcanic. You have your Mariana Islands and the Philippine Islands, okay, both highly volcanic due to the ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergence. And you also have your uh, Indonesian Islands due to your ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergence and also your Tonga Islands, same exact thing. So all of your features are going to be similar, except now what's going to happen is your volcanic mountains are in the water that produce volcanic island arc system. That's essentially the big difference between ocean to continent and ocean to ocean. Now you notice many of the locations around the Pacific Ocean that border the Pacific Ocean are going to be highly volcanic, big earthquakes because of massive subduction zones. Okay, we also have a couple locations in the Atlantic Ocean. We have a small subduction zone with the Caribbean plate. We also have a very small subduction zone down here with the little sandwich plate. Again, all of these features are going to have strong earthquakes, subduction, mountains, volcanoes, and you're always going to have a trench system as well. So please be aware of the features that can be found with ocean to continent and ocean to ocean. Okay, so I just alluded to the Pacific Ocean. The perimeter around the Pacific Ocean is what we call the Ring of Fire or the Pacific Ring of Fire. Very simply because some of the world's largest volcanoes exist around the perimeter of the Pacific Ocean and some of the world's most violent earthquakes have occurred around the perimeter of the Pacific Ocean. Because of the fact we have such violent subduction, violent earthquakes, and big volcanoes, it's coined the Ring of Fire. The third type of convergent plate boundary is continent to continent. In this case, you legitimately have continental crust crashing with continental crust. So what's going to happen? Again, crust is destroyed in this location. Subduction is going to occur, but it's not very deep, so you get very little to no melting at all. So your mountains that are produced okay, are not going to be volcanic, and you tend to get, again, very strong earthquakes. Let's take a look at, some, at the best location on the planet for this. Because your continents are going to crash together, you get what's called crustal uplift. The, the crustal plates tend to get forced upward, so you tend to get some of the tallest mountains in the world. So here's your continent content convergent plate boundary, and the best location for this is going to be India crashing into Asia. And the mountain range that's produced in this case is going to be the Himalayan mountains. Okay, the best location would be right there, the Indian Australian plate crashing up to the Eurasian plate. Again, you notice that you have continent to continent convergence, very big mountain range produced due to that massive crustal uplift. You also have another location here with the Arabian plate crashing up into the Eurasian plate. You have a small mountain range called the Zagros Mountains at that location. Here's India and the Himalayas. Beautiful shot of the Himalayan mountain range. So that's it for now. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon.